Okay, all right. So today we're going to talk about rate of change, which is an application of using the slope formula. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for the next couple of days. Okay, all right, so let's go. Okay, all right, so write this down. Okay, so we're going to talk about the rate of change. Now, it says the formula, but there's no new formula, actually, because I'm going to show you this. Okay, all right. Now, before I do that, I want to quickly review because rate of change sounds something like unit rate, and these are actual regions questions. So I figure I can just go over a couple of these questions with you guys just to kind of like get, get, your, uh, get your thinking going. Okay, so real quick, okay? Review on unit rate. Okay, a recipe calls for, so we're comparing milk to flour, right? So let's see, right? It's good old proportion. So 1.5 cups of milk for every three cups of flour. And Seth made a mistake, used five cups of flour. How many cups of milk? By the way, this is an actual region's question, so I'm not, uh, not, uh, not going out of bounds here. Okay, so let's see. Five times one and a half divided by three, right? So it's 2.5. Okay, that's it, all right? Uh, the next thing I want to show you or ask you is looking at number four, right? Granola bar costs uh, 55 cents each. What table represents this relationship? All right, so if you buy one, right? If you buy none, you pay nothing. If you buy one, it'll cost you 110. If you buy four, right, which is double that, it'll cost you that much. So it's actually choice two is right here. Okay, that's it. That's all, that's all I'm going to spend time on, which is like less than a minute. Okay, now let's talk rate of change. Now, I know there's a lot going on here, so let me just do it like this. Okay, so what is a rate of change? So a rate of change measures how two variables are related to each other. Okay, sounds very familiar, right? That sounds like a function to me, right? And that's what graphs are, right? Graphs are functions, okay? Rate of change can be ex uh, expressed in many ways. So, right, this you should write down only because it puts everything that you've learned so far in this unit in one go, okay? So rate of change is the slope, which is represented by the letter M, which is the formula, right? Which is the delta Y over delta X, which is rise over run. And then lastly, this is the, the last link for today. It's the change in Y over the change in X, which by the way, that's the same thing as saying this. Okay, so what we're going to do essentially is using the slope formula to answer some uh, word problem like questions or questions with graphs. That's it, okay? Nothing crazy here, okay? But the only reason why I think it's going to take two days is because you just need some time to practice because uh, it's uh, very difficult to present the information in one day. Okay, so now, if you look at the rate of change by using a table, right, all these numbers, these increments, right, so from negative 3 to 1 is a change of 4, right, from 1 to 9 is a change of 8. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you is this, all right? So I just erased uh, what I wrote down. The other thing that I want to point out to you is how does slope work in a question like this? Okay, so now think about this, right? So what I've just mentioned is that these, these increments, right? plus four, right? Negative three plus four is one, and then one plus eight is nine. Now, at first glance, you might look at this and say, well, this isn't, these numbers don't go up in increments, right? And neither do these numbers. But what I want to point out to you then is the fact that they don't have to go up in increments because what we really want to know is what the change is. So let me, let me point this out to you, what I mean, right? So from negative three to one, the change in y, right, is 4. So the change delta y is 4. And at the same time, from negative 3 to negative 1, it went up 2. And that's the change in x, right? Now, similarly, if you could see what happens from going from 1 through 9, right, the change in y was 8. And the change in y, I mean, change in this side, right, change of x is 4, so on and so forth. 
right? So if we were to examine then the difference, right? Or rather, let me change that. Rather, whether the line is a straight line, right? Or a curvy or crooked line, right? You would have to do the same thing like you would with slope. Right, which is delta y over. All right, the computer's a little slow right now. Delta y over delta x, which is four over two. Right. Now let's examine the rest of these. Right. So that would be eight over four. Six over three. And two over one. Now, what do you think all of these fractions, or these ratios, or these slopes have in common? Yeah, they're all two, right? If you simplify them, have you noticed that? So in that way, since the rate of change is consistent or constant, the line is a straight one. Okay, so that's the that's the one thing I would want you to get out of this part of the lesson here. Okay. Now here on a graph, right? Remember, this is rise, right? Up five, over run. Right. So at any point, right? If I were to ask you for these two points, a color is in gray. Let me use uh, red. Right. This compared to this. Right. What's the rate of change? That's no different than me asking you. What is the rise? Overrun. That's it. So what's the what's the rate of change? In this case, yes, yeah, five eight rise overrun. Okay, which is the slope. That's it. That's the rate of change. Okay. All right. So with that said, uh, now. Now I'm going to add an extra word in there, which is average rate of change, which means this. Okay. Now, if I got a crazy-looking curvy line like this, right, like this light blue one here that I'm highlighting right now. Okay. The question is something like this. Let me highlight this, like you know, in earnest. If I got a line like this, right, that I'm highlighting right here. Right. If I got got a line going on like this, and I ask you, hey, um, between this point and this point, what's the rate of change? Now, the reason why this is more prominent with curved lines is because that means the rate of change isn't constant. Remember what I said, right? Or even in seventh grade. Remember in seventh grade. I wonder if this is gonna draw a straight line. Remember in seventh grade. What's a proportional line? How do you know if a line is proportional? Yeah, straight line through the origin, right? So let me just draw a different line. Okay. So let's say we got a line that looks like this, or like this. All right, right through the origin, straight line. And what that would suggest. Is that this line here? The change is constant, right? I mentioned this in an earlier lesson, right? Like the line doesn't curve around, so it doesn't like the values don't change like disproportionately all the time. This is why we were doing unit rate before, because unit rate is very uniform, right? Like if you pay fifty-five cents of a candy bar, if when you buy two, it's a dollar ten, right? And when you buy four of them, it's two dollars and twenty cents. Like you're not gonna get charged more or less because you bought more or less, right? Not according to that logic, right? So the line is constant, but the problem is then, all right, is that when we have a curvy line, it's very hard to tell what the rate is because if we were a straight line, it would be super easy. Right, I could pick any two points on the line, and it will be consistent. Right, it will be constant. Whereas with a curvy line, you don't know. But the good news is that you can 
at any point in time on a region's question, they would just tell you which two points they're referring to. So hence the arrows here. So if I were to ask you, right, based on this graph here of this curvy line, right, in the highlighter, so if you follow this line that's in the highlighter yellow color, right, the, the, the logic goes something like at those two, at that interval, right, between this first point and this second point, I don't know what the exact rate of change is, but I could take the average. And how do you take the average? Here. Okay, I'm not doing a very good job drawing that brace. Brace? Yeah. Braces. Okay, right? How do I do that? I use the slope formula. So I used that I determined the change in y, right? Determine the change in y over the change in the x value. That's how I'm. That's how we're going to do it. All right, as a community of mathematicians, think of it like that. Okay, so that's what that means. Now, how does it look like in a real life question? Well, look no further. Here's an example. Right. So here we got a question. All right. So here it says uh, the graph below records the number of. Okay. Why am I reading so slow? The number of hours and distance. Okay. Fine. Right. Hours. Miles. Okay. Miles per hour. Right. Speed. Right. Uh, travel by family. The graph is non-linear. Right. You can see it's not a straight line. So the rate of change is con is not constant. Okay. All right. To compute the rate of change for the entire trip. So let's say we start at zero zero, right? You have to start at zero zero, right? Because it's not like you wake up and magically you're in the car and you're like on your way to the destination already, right? So how do I find the rate of change between zero zero and this last marker here when you arrive at the destination? Let's say, right? How do you do it? Slope formula. Okay, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 390 minus 0, right, and then x2, so that's 10 minus 0. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy here, right? I'm just like, I'm just, look, I'm, I'm, I'm what? I'm pinpointing these two coordinates, right? And I'm just saying, I'm just going to find a slope. So what is that? 39, right? Now you can look at it, the rate of change is 39 or 39 miles per hour. Okay, so in a way, this is an approximation and we're making the assumption as if during this whole trip, that during this whole trip, right? from here to here, right? That we never change speed. Now I know we did, right? Because the graph wasn't straight, but it's to calculate something that's an approximation. It's an average. Okay, got that? Okay. Now, um, let's see, right? You see the answer right there. Okay, now how am I doing on time? I, 10, uh, let's see if I could push my luck. Now, what can we do? I can show you these, but then there's like a million regions questions. Let's see. Hmm. I keep feeling like, oh, you know what? There are extra questions tomorrow. So you know what? Let's take two days to do it, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Let's do, let's do these examples today. Tomorrow, I'll show you all the regions questions on this. And the last two takes a little bit of time to do. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? All right, let's take a look, okay? So why don't we do one more together, okay? Now let's see. Yeah, all right. Actually, should you try this on your own? Hold on, let me press pause. Okay, all right, made my mind. Try this one on your own, okay? If you need an example, uh, roll back the tape and rewind, okay? All right, so press pause right now. Okay, all right, and we're back. So now, one of the things I realized when I was doing this question is they want you to find that the rate of change, average rate of change between the first and fifth hours, right? You don't even need to look at a graph because here, that's one and that's five, right? And then you just plug it in 
and then you will get this. Okay, that's it. All right, now, uh, let's see if you should try these two together. I think you should, I need to shrink this. Now, I didn't want to shrink it too much because I want you to be able to see that graph on the second question. Okay, so would this work? Yeah, so press pause right now and give it a try. Okay, all right, so press pause right now. Okay, all right, and we're back. Now, look at this, right? For the first one, what I want to point out is basically what I show you a few minutes ago with this table here where you have this going on here, right? Where the change is like, you know, from 1898 to 1971, the change in Y, right? So let me erase this, all right? Because I didn't order it very well, right? The change in Y, let me use a different color. So the change in Y, right? over the change in x, right? Would look something like this. It would be like 73 over five, right? 14 over eight, and 21 over 10, or even six over 11. Now, what can you say about these fractions? Right, these are not equal. Okay, and as soon as that happens, then you can make the conclusion that this line, all right, is not gonna be a straight line. It's not a straight line, right? So it's non-linear, okay? So explain your answer, right? So you can say something like, no, uh, this is a non-linear function because the change in y to change in x right is not constant okay something to that effect okay all right now this second one here right what i did was i plotted the point now i know for sure that 0, 0600 is a valid point down here, not so. So the only point, the only other legitimate point, it's at 9, 200. So I found the change, and then that's, that's the answer. Now that really leaves us with this. And the value drops $400 every nine years. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's do this one tomorrow. Okay, all right, I couldn't help it. Uh, I wanted to do this last question with you. Otherwise, it's gonna really bother me. And this question isn't hard, actually. So let's take a look, all right? Compare the quantities column A and column B, right? Now, column A, the rate of change, right? Column B, the rate of change for, you know, line B, right? Which is true, right? The quantity, so look, long story short, this has a steeper slope. So the slope here, it's higher, right? By the way, the mic isn't very, the sound isn't great because I didn't even take the mic out for this, right? So that's it, right? The rate of change, if the slope is higher than the rate of change, it's also higher. So that's it. Okay, all right. So signing off here, have a good day, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. OMG, that was so good.